I went from overweight and no sports to a professional athlete in 36 months, and this is how I did it. Yep, that's me. The journey all started back in 2017. I was 94 kilos. I couldn't swim, bike, or run. I had to lose some kgs. I wanted to be fit again. I uh, challenged myself and I signed up for a 70.3, a half distance Ironman in uh, Barcelona, May. So I had four and a half months in order to prepare for this event. Looking at the data from back then, I was training approximately in between five and nine hours a day. You can find a training schedule, by the way, in the link in the description. I saw that I had some talent in the sport. Um, after like nine weeks into training, I ran a half marathon in one hour and uh, 36 minutes. So I was improving pretty quick. In the end, 70.3 Barcelona, 21st of May. During the race week, went out for an open water swim and saw I had open water anxiety. in it. Where are the flipping sharks at? During the race, I managed to swim the 1.9 k's in 35 minutes and 42 seconds onto the bike. To me! So the bike was and is my strongest discipline. And I rode a set free, sub free hour, uh, 90k ride. And I didn't give a flip and flip about being aero or looking sexy. Uh, onto the marathon, half marathon, that I ran in one hour and 53 minutes. So uh, in the end, it was time for beers and on to the next chapter. Now, whenever I was always bragging about my Ironman accomplishments, my friends always humbled me and told me that I only did a half Ironman. So in order to complete the chapter, I had to do a full. So I registered for Ironman Maastricht, which would take place on August 5th, 2018. So with my savings, I bought a triathlon bike back then in 2017, a Cervelo P5. In 2017, I solely trained based on heart rate. From October 2017 till April 2018, I only trained eight to 11 hours a week, which isn't actually that much. But I've analyzed the training sessions what I've done. And what's funny though, is that I ran, for example, with running, the easy sessions really easy and the hard sessions really hard. And that's also do it, something I'm doing now, but I, I was actually already smart back then. Before we're going on with the video, it would really help me if you would subscribe to my channel. And as of, uh, not this week, but the week after that, I'm coming with giveaways, a lot of giveaways from my sponsors. And the only thing you need to do to be entitled for a giveaway is be subscribed to my channel. Mega easy, let's get it. And on the bike, I would do a heart session twice a week. So I, I love the bike, hated the swim. Anyway, wrapping up 2017 as a triathlete, I did 140 kilometers of swimming. I did a bit more than 6,000 kilometers on the bike and 750 kilometers of running, which is a decent amount for your first year as a triathlete or into sports at all. Now, fast forward to April 2018, something drastically changed. I upped my training from 12 hours a week till 19 to 21 hours a week. And thinking about it right now, it's actually pretty crazy because I was working three days a week and I'm thinking like, wow, I was training a shitload back then, especially on the bike. I was clocking in between 400 and 550 kilometers on the bike. Um, still all based on heart rate, no power meter, nothing. And on the 22nd of July, I've clocked my longest run session, which was basically a 27.2K uh, 27 steady run. The long run was two weeks before I met Maastricht, race day. In preparation for the Ironman, I've only been swimming twice a week and I've managed to clock a one hour and nine minute swim without a wetsuit. I was absolutely, absolutely stoked getting out of the water onto the bike. Um, first time that I rode with a power meter that I installed literally the week of the race, managed to clock the seventh fastest bike ride that day, averaging, I think, 250 watts. The data it will be in there and a 449 bike split. Now, mind you, that day it was 34 degrees, 34. And I've never done a marathon, so I had to run a marathon. I got off the bike, stomach cramps, and literally had no clue what was coming at me. But um, I just settled in the pace, no clue what it would end up to be. So I remember I was running 425s, and I managed to run the whole way through. So I, in the end, I ran a free, 307 uh, marathon off the bike, coming in first in my age group, seventh overall, and most importantly, qualified for Kona the big dance in Hawaii. And it's actually pretty impressive thinking about it back then that I did all of that within the time span of 18 months from coming from 94 kilos with no sports at all till qualifying for Kona. Now I had promised my friends and family that I would stop after the Ironman World Championships because it was taking up so much time. 
after Ironman Maastricht, I signed my first what, can, sponsorship. I can call it a sponsorship, definitely. A Dutch wheel builder. Uh, fast forward, and I was on my way to the big island. And at the, on the big island, I got to meet my big stars. Janice Ferdino, Jody Skipper, the race. And this was the race that was going to change my triathlon career for good because someone's, something was going to happen that I didn't foresee. So the swim and the bike didn't really change from Ironman Maastricht. I swam another 109 and I biked a 439 bike split. Um, the data is in there. But I was setting myself up for a hot, hot run. Now, Maastricht was hot, but this was different. About the footage what you're seeing now is me running through the energy lab. And what you can see is that I'm already kind of switched off from my mind. With about two kilometers to go, I decided to go full power, full blast. Everything that I had left in the tank, I wanted to like empty the tank. So I was sprinting. And as you can see the details up until now, I was clocking a free 26 or something marathon pace. But the last kilometer, I ran a free 50 kilometer pace with my heart rate going above 170. Now this shows you that how mentally stronger I am than physically at that time. And that moment I uh, woke up in the hospital and um, I didn't know what was going on. I could see my dad, he was, um, he was holding my hand and he was saying, we're proud of you, Tom. Everyone's proud of you. And at that moment, I didn't know, but I didn't finish the world championships. 700 meters in front of the finish line after 41.3 kilometers, I collapsed and I heat stroked and didn't finish. Now, with me not being able to finish the race, I'm not going in depth about that, but that kind of did something mentally to me that I could only restore that by signing up for a new Ironman, qualifying again and going back to Kona and get that medal. Some information, let's talk, check on the top age group men. They have gone through kilometer 35 and our leader is from, it is Dutch and he is Tom Oosterdijk and he looks to be leading the entire age group men's field at the moment. Downtown, the, uh, the umbrellas around, it's just trickling down there just a little bit, but as we get another one of our finishers across the line there today, congratulations. You know, it goes out to another one of our top men finishers. Now I'm still getting goosebumps whenever I see them, uh, them videos. Uh, looking at the data again, um, well, one thing that taught me that day that I had to race my own race, had my uh, best ever power output ever that day. So looking at the data, the bike ride, I did five hours and nine minutes, which was basically something like 14 minutes behind the fastest professional rider. And I had the fastest amateur time, if I'm not mistaken, with 271 watts uh, uh, normalized. And that's basically 25 watts higher than uh, the year before. And then I backed it off with a 259 50H, which is a sub free marathon of the bike. And it got me first amateur overall and fifth including the professional field so if I would have been racing pro already I would have been in the prize money it's also uh, due to this date still the only race that would have been in the prize money but um, yeah after Cork fast forward we're going to 2020 the year of the pandemic but before the pandemic I went down under and that's where I got my pro license in New Zealand He's still in second behind Tom Osterdijk, a brand new Ironman athlete that is doing quite well. Uh, has had got a lot of love through Facebook earlier, but he's uh, Godart is about two minutes down, and then Matt. Now this footage, what we just saw, was me high-fiving Jody Skipper, my fellow podcaster. Since 2019, so the race in Ireland, my swimming and cycling has improved. I would say my run hasn't at the time, uh, so I swam a 56-minute. And then I uh, biked 271 watts again, but I got faster because I was more aerodynamic. So I clocked a four hours and 30 minute bi 39 minute bike split um, or 430 bike split. I don't even remember. I just got faster as I was more aerodynamic. And then I run a three hour marathon off the bike and it was good for a eight hour and 40 minute Ironman. Couple of seconds off the age group record at the time. Um, but again, finished in another top 10. So then I had Cork top 10, uh, this one top 10, and I did a half distance in New Zealand, which came in top 10 as well. 
And with the time and the placings, I managed to qualify for a professional license. And then, of course, the pandemic hit, but I had the pro license. Anyway, thanks for watching. Now you know the story. Hopefully it motivated you, to, uh, you a little bit. Hopefully you learned something from it. If you've got any questions, let them know in the comment section below. And um, I'll be back next Monday with a new video.